Today we uh, heard the miracle of the feeding of the multitude, 5,000 men and their families, out of five loaves and two fish. We call this is the gospel of blessing, or reading of the gospel of blessing. And it's read um, several times in our lectionary during the year, especially on the fifth Sunday, today being the fifth Sunday of the month of Ba'una. Um, it's a very special miracle that our Lord Jesus Christ performed. It's the only one that was attested to uh, by the four evangelists. Of course, uh, we read it because of the fifth Sunday, and also it's uh, very appropriate because today we are uh, almost towards the end of the fast of the apostles. We see the service of our fathers, the apostles. What amazes me um, always about this miracle is how little things can go a very long way. Little things can go a very long way. Uh, when you dissect this miracle, you can, you see f several components. The power of God, definitely, and, and, and the, the core of the miracle. Number two, the human weakness. Number three, the, we the, the witnesses, and so forth. God's power is always amazing because he's the creator of man, he's the creator of all matter, he's the author of life himself. I'm the way, the truth, and life. The human weakness or challenge is important to look at because we find ourselves in that position when we have little and I need to go a long way. It could be challenging when everything may seem hopeless, may, things may seem impossible, um, I find a very deep problem or very desperate problem with no solution in sight. I'm about to give up. But when I put this situation or this problem or challenge in the hands of God, it's a different, it's a different ball game altogether. It becomes a totally different issue. And this miracle there was so much demand and with such a little supply. The demand is to feed 5,000 families. At least, you know, talk about 15,000 people. The supply, five loaves and two fish. And the equation cannot be solved in any human way. Young boy. It's a, this is exactly the lunch of a young boy. Five small, I um, um, don't think these are big loaves. Probably there's very small loaves. And I don't think they're very, I don't think that's a, you know, it's, a, it's one of these big fish. You know, I think probably f fairly small. So you can imagine, just put, put, the, two, put the two numbers, 15,000, and then a young boy with, with his lunch, and it's just the, the situation seems impossible. Um, not your exact solution to the problem, to this problem. In the hand of God, a little bit can go a very long way. This one I want, I want to talk about briefly, how a little bit can go a long way. First of all, this is not a fluke. The Bible is full of examples of how a little bit can go a very long way. What I want to highlight is there is a pattern here, and we need to recognize the pattern. For example, Noah and the ark, when the ark, when, when they left the ark, there were eight, eight people. And these eight regenerated the whole population of the earth out of eight people, all humanity. Moses led thousands and thousands out of Egypt. And for 40 years, Moses. But God, he was not by himself. God helped him lead all these masses for all this time to lead them to the promised land. David, David, young boy with um, 
just a slingshot and a few stones, five stones, confronts a Gol Goliath, giant, uh, very fearsome giant, full armor. Daniel and the three youth, very few young men, were able to stand against Nebuchadnezzar, the mighty and fearsome king of Babylon, and against all his decrees. Jonah, Jonah, um, a prophet, would change the destiny, or God would and use him to change the destiny of Nineveh, a city of 120,000 people. Um, we missed Gideon. Gideon, with 300 men, he, he defeats a whole army, 300 men. He defeats thousands, the Midianites, by 300 men only. Twelve apostles, we just you know, celebrated Pentecost a few weeks ago. Twelve apostles took the word of God to their voices have gone throughout to the ends of the earth. And Christianity spread on, through all, the, all these continents through, of course, the work of the Holy Spirit through twelve apostles and their disciples and so forth. So we should not be surprised. We should not be surprised when five loaves and two fish can feed 15,000. And you say, okay, this is the Bible. But it's not only the Bible. The story keeps going on and on and on and on. Even to the, the very, I mean, this is not, of course, this is not a spiritual example, but show, but, but show you an example of how a, a, a little bit can go a long way. The, the events that unfolded in Egypt you know, a few weeks ago, or a few days ago, started with five young men who just had an idea. Five. I don't know what's, I know what's the deal with number five, but it seems, it seems five is a good number, one of these good numbers. Five young men thought of this idea, and, and you saw the result. And it's not the place to discuss it. But anyway, I just thought it was a good example how a little bit can go a very long way. The question is, so we saw now the pattern. How does a little bit go a long way? Only when God is in control. When we try to do it ourselves, you know, a little bit will go a little way, will not go a long way. But when you, when you take a very small number and multiply it times a very big number, you get a very big number, okay? When you multiply a very small number times infinity, you get still a very big number because God is in the picture. God being creator, author of life, the Pantokrator, almighty. Never should we underestimate what he can do. And not only what he can do, it, but how he does it because he does it in style. And when he can do it, and where he can do it. All these things, all these questions of what, when, where, how, you'll be surprised. Um, uh, you know, God's way of doing it is totally different and unexpected. How unsearchable, I love this uh, verse in you. How unsearchable are your judgments and how your ways past finding out? As the heaven are higher than the earth, so are your ways higher than the way of the Son of Man. God's ways are far uh, different and much more supreme that, than our own ways. Actually, not only that, but God likes to do a lot with little. God likes to do a lot with little. Um, I'll, you know, I won't be able to go on through every story or every example that I give, but I just take one of them, Gideon. Gideon the Midianites were attacking the people of Israel, and um, God told them, you know, you know, I want you to go and take care of the Midianites. So I assembled army. He started with an army of 32,000. Um, again, they didn't have a lot of uh, artillery and all of the stuff. So we, the, to fight a war back then, you need the biggest army. The, 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 the biggest weapon was, was just the number. Number was one of the, was, was the biggest issue because there was... Uh, there were no sophisticated weaponry back then, just, you know, the usual weapons that were available back then. So God told them, no, 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 that's too big. Because if they win, the Israelites will think 
will say, my own strength saved me. My own strength. We did it ourselves because we were mighty. We were, we were a lot of us. So he, God asked Gideon to filter them down. So he said, okay, he put a test. God, God gave him instructions. And he was able to filter them down from 32,000 to about 10,000. He sent 22,000 home. And God said, no, there's still too many. They will still boast about it. Give them one more filter. And give them one more filter. And the people who passed that filter or that test were 300. And Gideon said, are you sure you want to do this? God said, yes. This is how I want to do it. And lo and behold, Gideon with 300 men was able to defeat army of millions of thousands. When we plan, we, 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 like, you know, we like to plan things. We like to plan things, not just things. We plan, plan things to the nth degree. Yeah, and it means we'd like to take care of every, all, all sorts of details. And when things work out, we say, oh, we, had, we did a good job planning. I you know, feel good about ourselves. And that's what God warned Gideon that they would do, that, that, that Israelites will do. They will feel good about themselves. Um, and when things don't go our way, we begin to find, you know, play the blame game, you know, try to blame others or maybe, because my, my plan was perfect. My plan was perfect. Somebody else did not do their part or maybe God did something. But when we hardly have a plan or when we don't have a plan, we really want to do something, but we don't have the resources to do it, we can put whatever we have, even if it's little, in the hands of God and let God do whatever He sees fit according to His will. So why things can go a long way? It's because God can and this is the way He does things. The last question I want to ask, or the last point I want to address, how little things going a long way affects us. First of all, it should be a source of encouragement for us. It should be encouragement for us. We can easily get discouraged, but when we remember this, that little things can go a long way, our faith should be renewed. Little things go a long way is a it, it, it should, it's an exercise in our faith. Do your best and leave to God the rest. I still have to do my best. I cannot, you know, uh, neglect my duty and say, no, okay, uh, uh, God will. No, do your best. I mean, I, when, when, when Christ told the disciples, find them something to eat, they went and searched around. And they found this young boy with his lunch. And the, Christ took it from there. I still have to find do my best and let leave to God the rest. This also, um, like, a little things going a long way should help us not discount anything small or anything few in number. Let's say I'm serving. I have a service. I was asked to serve. And um, I have very few people. I have very few resources, very limited resources. Never underestimate what God can do. Um, St. Paul tells his disciple Timothy, let no one, you're young, let no one despise your youth. Be an example. And you know what St. Timothy was even a bishop in Ephesus. Um, this is um, another uh, any, a very nice verse in the beginning of the book of Jeremiah. When Jeremiah tells God, obviously he was young at that time, I don't know, I don't know what to say. I'm a young, I'm too young. And God told him, no, don't say that. Don't say I'm young. I'm going to put my, my, my word in your mouth. Don't say I'm too young. Don't say I were too few. St. John the Baptist, I mean, he, he, today we celebrate his, uh, his birth six months before uh, the birth of Christ next year, Lord willing. He was just one man. But Herod was terrified of him. He was one strong voice. One strong voice. He didn't have like an entourage or anything. He was just by himself speaking the truth. Never underestimate what little... Being in the minority does not mean I'm weak. Being in the minority does not mean I'm weak. I just have to give it my best, put it in God's hand, and see what happens. Uh, I came across this verse... Uh, Yesterday, Second Chronicles 20:12. This is when um, one of the kings of Judah, Jehoshaphat, uh, was faced with an invasion. This is part of his prayer. 
Listen carefully to this verse, 2 Chronicles 20, 12. Oh, our God, will you not judge them, those who are invading or those who are attacking? For we have no power against this. We have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us. Nor do we know what to do. We have no power. We don't know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. Our eyes are upon you. This is somebody who realized that with human mind, this multitude is too many. Me, I don't know what to do, but my eyes are upon you. And let God lead you. Um, another example of this, when um, uh, a Sy the Syrian army was going for Elisha, I think at the town called Dothan, and then they surrounded the small town. And they wake up in the morning and found this small multitude of armies surrounding. And uh, his servant runs to him screaming, we are doomed. We are, well, all this, you know, all the people surrounding us. And then Elisha you know, says to God, very calm and very relaxed, he's saying, God, please open the eyes of the young man to see that those who are with us are much more than those who are against. Just don't see them, but they're there. Little things can go a long way. No wonder why even the fragments uh, were not left behind. The fragments were collected because these are little things. They're just fragments, but they can go a long way. They fill 12 baskets of fragments. And the very fact that uh, the lunch who was in a very small pouch or small bag made 15,000 people full and 12 baskets. I'm sure these baskets were, were fairly big baskets. Are, are left, that's an amazing testimony of how little things can go along way. Put your faith in God. Do whatever you can and let God do the rest. I hope you can apply this in everything in your life. You could apply it in your school, in your work, in your service, wherever you are. Don't ever, don't, let's not give up. And to God be the glory now and forever unto the end of ages. Amen.